And in this video, we're going to be going over the court transcripts of Billy Jasper's appearance in court. Firstly, I'm going to read to you a newspaper article which will give you some background on Billy Jasper and his version of events. And then I'm going to jump straight into the court transcripts. Billy Jasper claims that another criminal, Jesse Gale, gave him £5,000 to drive an accomplice referred to for legal reasons as Mr D to and from Workhouse Lane in Rettendon, Essex, where he was going to carry out a cocaine deal with the three men, Tucker, Tate and Rolf. Jasper testified at the Old Bailey that he had agreed to the plan, but had not spotted Mr D's 9mm Browning pistol and sawn off shotgun when he first drove him to Workhouse Lane. He said it was only on collecting him that he saw the weapon and realised that Tate, Tucker and Rolf had been killed. But Jasper did not fit in with Essex Police's line of inquiry. 54-year-old Michael Steele was already their prime suspect, and Jasper was never charged in connection with the murder. OK, now Mr Jasper, can I first of all tell you this? I'm not going to be asking you questions at the moment with any intention of you incriminating yourself. Do you follow? Yes. This is my first question. Are you an associate of major criminals? Yes. Criminals concerned with major robberies? Sometimes. Criminals concerned with drugs? Sometimes. Drugs including cocaine? Sometimes. Drugs involving sums of £300,000, that sort of amount? Sometimes, yes. Criminals who have no inhibitions about shooting each other if things fall out. That is correct. You wrote your own statement, did you not? Yes. At the Forest Gate Police Station, in which you named some of those criminals. Yes. One of whom do you know has recently himself been killed? No. You did not know? No. Would you prefer me not to name the names that you named? Yes. Would it be true for you to tell me that you are frightened of these people? You could say that. And that is the reason why you do not want me to name them? You could say that. That is why you prefer me not to? That's right. Then I will not. You would not have described, or would you, their false involvement? No. In a killing, if that was not correct, would you? No because to do so would almost inevitably mean that you yourself would be shot, right or wrong. It could happen. Now, when you were last here, we went through a map of a journey. Do you remember that? Yes, a journey which ended in Rectory Lane. Well, I don't know the name of the road. As a fact, please, did you twice take police officers on a journey? Once or twice. Was it you who directed them? That is correct. And did you subsequently confirm that the directions were at your direction? Yes. Was it out of fear that you were unwilling to admit to us that you had undertaken that journey on the last occasion you were in the witness box? You could say that. Fear for the reasons we have already discussed. Yes. Are you now willing to tell us whether that journey that you showed the police was a journey that in fact you had undertaken before? Yes. Is the answer to my question yes or no? Yes. And so you were describing by way of pointing out the route something in respect of which you were a witness. Correct. The car you were in, and I'm now referring to the journey you made as a witness, do you follow? Yes. The car you were in, was that a stolen car? Yes. Can you please tell us the make? A Fiat Uno Turbo. Now, was it one man or two men who were in that car during that journey? One man. Apart from one man, was there a holdall in the car? Yes. Are you able to tell us what was in that holdall? Yes. What? Um, a sawn-off shotgun and a handgun. And a handgun. Was that a pump-action shotgun? It was. Can you tell my lord and this jury, please, how you saw what was in that holdall? I looked in it. Do you know whether that holdall stayed in the car throughout that journey? No, it never. What happened to it? It was took by a person. Where? Um, down the country lane. Did you see where that person went? Over a gate and into a field. 
Did that person return? He did. With the holdall? With two holdalls. With two holdalls. And had there been two holdalls before? No. Were you able to see whether both holdalls contained anything on return? No. Where were they put? Oh, on the floor, the passenger side, the front seat. In what direction, sorry, were you the driver? Yes. And the driver threw out? Yes. In what direction did you then drive? Towards, back towards Essex, more or less, Woodford Way. Sorry, Ilford? Woodford Way. Woodford. Do you mean driving on a road called Woodford Way or going in the Woodford direction? The direction. To get it clear, on the return journey, was there one other man or more in the car? Just one. And without going into too much detail, in what area or what sort of address did you drop that person? Um, a wine bar. Were you paid for driving that stolen car? Yes. How much? £5,000. Now, when had you been asked to do this? Um, a week or less before? A week, maybe less? No, sir. A week or less before? Were you asked, and tell me if you were not, please, by the man who accompanied you in the car or someone else? No, it was someone else. Are you prepared to name that someone else? No. Are you prepared to name the man in the car? No. Apart from seeing two guns, did you see any gloves? Yeah. Where? On someone's hands. I'm not asking you for names. Whom? The passenger. On the journey out or the journey back? Both. What sort of gloves are we talking about here? Hospital gloves. I'm sorry? Hospital gloves. When you set out on this journey, please, am I right or am I not right, that you had not seen the contents of the holdall when you set out? That's correct. When you set out, was the holdall in the car? Yeah. When did you see the contents? About halfway through the journey when the passenger got out to meet someone. When there was a break in the journey? Yeah. When the person went to meet someone? That's correct, yeah. Are you prepared to tell us in what area that was? Upminster area. Now, what time of day or night are we talking about? Round about midnight sometime? Use the phrase some or sometime. We all have perhaps different meanings of that. Well, an hour before or an hour after. Roughly how long did it take you to get from Upminster to the lane? About half an hour, something like that. So you would have arrived, would this be right or would this be wrong, at the lane at approximately midnight. Around that time. When you set out on that journey, it having been arranged approximately a week before, did you know the purpose of that journey? And I add to you that you need not incriminate yourself. No answer. Now on that journey, you turn right to Woodham Road, up Woodham Road, left to Rectory Lane. Now it is there that I suggest you twice took the police, looking at the plan again and speaking and answering questions to me today. Do you agree that that is correct? Possibly, yeah. And the bridge? The bridge there must be over the River Crouch. Are you able to help us whether it was that river or some other place? Or do you not know? I can't remember. However, was it anything to do with the incident? Can you help us about that? Um, I didn't give way, a uh, give way sign. There was a give way sign? Yes. Were you supposed to give way? Yes. And did you give way? No. Was your passenger happy or unhappy? Well, he wasn't too happy. And in regard to that journey on the way back, can you again explain what happened? Well, I didn't give way, a uh, give way sign. During this journey, are you able to describe, not by what was said or by what you saw or heard, but what was the occupant's demeanour? Frustrated. Can you elaborate on that? No. Subsequently, we know that you were arrested at Forest Gate Police Station. Yeah. And it was at Forest Gate Police Station, just to answer this question, yes or no, that you spoke to the police? Yes. Now, you were arrested, I think, on the 15th of January, 1996. Something like that. 
It is a matter of record and arrested for another matter as a fact. Did you speak to the police about the evidence that you had given to my lord and the jury today? Yes. Did you then go on a journey with the police? Well, we've already been over that. Yes, I have to come to something else though. Yes. Right, after the first journey, were you interviewed by the police on tape? Yeah, possibly. Now, Mr Jasper, in reply to the police officer making this statement, you said, quote, about the end of November, something like that. I'm not too keen on dates. That is what you said to the police on the 17th of January. Do you follow? Yes. We know that this is on the tape. Is it correct that this incident, as best you can remember, as you said to the police on the 17th of January 1996, the incident that you have described, is it correct, as best you can remember it, that it took place around the end of November, something like that? Is that true or false? Well, I can't remember. You cannot remember? I can't remember saying that. Okay, Mr Jasper, can you help us please, as best you can, when did this incident happen? What, talking to the police or the other things? No, the journey back with the guns. End of November, beginning of December. Right, do you remember today what the weather was like? Cold. Sorry? Cold. You said that you are unwilling to name names. That's right. If I pressed you, would you be prepared to name the first name of this person? No. Mr Jasper, before today, when you came into court, have you ever had any communication or contact with any of these defendants directly or indirectly? No, not at all. Not at all? Do you know them? No, not at all. Not at all? No. None of them are friends or acquaintances of yours, are they? No, not at all. Have you had any communication with them while you have been in court today? No, not at all. Are you sure about that? Positive. Do you remember just before lunch, at about 10 to 1, the jury went out? Do you remember that happening? Not really. You were standing in the witness box. When the jury left? Yes, that is the time. Do you remember that? Yeah. Can you remember what you did as they were going out? No. Did you not look at the dock? Just looking, it's a room, isn't it? It is a room, it is a room, with a dock in it, is it not? Yes. You know what the dock looks like? Yes. When the jury were going out, did you look over at the dock? Probably. And do you remember what you did when you looked over at the dock? No, just walking past. Do you remember what you did when you looked over at the dock? No, not at all. You winked, did you not? At who? At the dock. Rubbish. You say it did not happen? Yeah. You've just told the jury about a night you went somewhere in Essex and you have had a map put in front of you. I think you still have it open, is that right? Page three. Yes, before that night you've just been telling us about, you had never been to that area before. No. So it was the first time, was it? Yeah. When you went there that night and you told us about being in the car with the man and going to a lane and there being a field, did you know what that area was called? Afterwards. You knew after, but did you know at that night? No. So you can drive from A to B and not know the area? Well, I wasn't lost, put it that way. You were not lost, but did you not know the name of the area you were in? Rettenden. Did you know that night, or was that something that you learned about later? Well, within, on the way home. You have told us already that you were spoken to by some policemen in January 1996. Do you remember? Yes. And do you remember that they were asking you about where you said you had been? Do you remember that? Yes. Do you remember that before you went out anywhere of a policeman while you were at Forest Gate Police Station that you were shown a map, were you not? That is correct. Do you know why the policeman showed you a map? see if I could probably point the place out. That is right. And did you point somewhere out on the map? I can't remember. You cannot remember. Let me see if I can help you. If you turn in the white bundle that you have before you, Mr Jasper, we have at page one, you have to go back a couple of pages, a map showing a larger area of Essex than the one that you were looking at a few minutes ago. Just familiarise yourself with that. London is in the left-hand corner. 
Colchester, sorry, Ipswich is right at the top on the right hand side. Have you acquainted yourself with it? Yeah. Was the map that you were shown when you were at the police station something like this? Could have been. When you were at the police station on this occasion, do I take it that you had read in the papers or heard on the news about the killings of the three men? Say that again. On the day that you were at the police station in January 1996, I take it that before then you had read in the newspapers or seen on the television the report of the three men being killed in a car. Is that correct? Yeah, I think everyone did. Everyone had. Did you know when you had read the newspapers where it was said that the killings had taken place? More or less, yes. And what was that? What was what? Where it took place? Yes. What did the report say? Essex area, wasn't it? Essex. Anything more specific than Essex that you remember from the reports? No, not really. Not really? Well, it's not something you really dwell over. It's a natural day occurrence in my life. Things like that. So you don't really dwell on them. You cannot remember, you say, when you were first shown a map by a policeman what you did. Is that right? Did you point something out, though? Do you remember doing that? Pointing somewhere? I can't remember. Can you find Chelmsford on that map, please? Yep. Have you got Chelmsford? Yes. If you follow, if you put your finger on the O in Chelmsford, and you just trace down with your finger in a straight line from the O, about half an inch, do you see the words, how green? Yeah. And does that ring a bell? No. Was that not the area that you pointed out to the policeman when he first gave you a map and asked you where the killings had taken place? Do you remember that now? Maybe. Do you remember being asked to describe the area where the killings took place? Maybe. Can you remember whether there was anything else close by? To where? The lane? Yes. Well, there was a garden so garden centre, a garden nursery. A garden nursery? Yes. And a car sales place, do you remember that? Yes. Now, you've told Mr. Lederman about something that happened on the way back from the lane. Do you remember about the giveaway sign? Yes, that is correct, yeah. Is that all that happened on the way back, or did something else happen? A phone call. A phone call. Anything else? Did anybody get out of the car? After? Yes, on the way back. I don't think so. Do you remember telling the policeman that something happened on the way back? I can't remember. Can you remember telling the policeman that the man you were with dropped something in a river? I don't know about dropping it in the river because I couldn't see where the river was, but, well, if there was a river. Do you remember telling the policeman before you ever went out anywhere at all that on the way back the man you were with dropped something in a river? I can't remember saying that. You cannot remember saying that? Did anything like that happen? I'm not prepared to say. Why are you not prepared to tell us if the man got out of the car? Just not prepared to say. Can you help us as to what time of day we are talking about when you arrived at the lane? Round about 12-ish. Midnight? Yes. Could you remember what day of the week this happened? No. What night you were talking about? No. Whether it was a weekday night or weekend night, you could not say. No. Can you remember the route that you and the man you say took from the London area Upminster in order to get to the lane? Not off by heart, no. Do you remember that policemen took you out and asked you to tell them where to go? Probably, yes. Do you remember that when the policeman took you out on the route, you ended up on the Resident Turnpike? That is a big roundabout with traffic lights. Does that ring a bell? No. Do you have your white binder open, please, at the same map, number one? Can you remember what road you directed the policeman along? No. Did you know the A127 at all? The what? The A127 once did. Probably, yeah. Do you know where it goes to? Is that the once did road? Could you point it out on the map for us, please? I'm not any good at reading maps. Well, perhaps we can take you firstly to the roundabout. If you turn to page three in your white binder, you have the map that you were looking at earlier. Do you see it is in square 2B, the Rettendon Turnpike roundabout? Yeah. As you arrived at that roundabout from the general direction of London, can you remember where you told the policeman to go? I think we went past it first. I couldn't get my bearings. 
you could not get your bearings. Can you remember where you went past? No. Did you end up in Battlebridge? Did that ring a bell? No. But anyway, having gone past it, did you then go back onto the roundabout for a second time in the police car? Well, I turned around. You got back to the Resident Turnpike, which we can see there, yes? Yeah. When you got back to the Turnpike for a second time, where did you tell the policeman to drive to then? I can't remember. You told him to drive up here on the A130, going towards the top of this plan, do you remember? That's where I told them to turn around, yeah. That is when you got back to the roundabout the second time, having got it wrong the first time, having failed to get your bearings. The second time you got to the roundabout, you went straight up the A130 towards the top of the page. Do you remember? No, I can't remember. In fact, looking at our map, you went straight off the page. Does that ring a bell? No. I'm afraid we'll have to go back, if you would, to page number one. I want you please to find Wickford. It is quite close to the bottom of the page. I'm pointing to it here, if it helps. Just about there. It is in the capital letters. Do you have it? Yeah. If you see the word Wickford and you go about half an inch diagonally to the right, you get, do you see, to the word Battlebridge? Yes. Just above Battlebridge, where I'm pointing, there, the little circle in the middle of the road. That is the Rettenden Turnpike. Do you have that? Yes. The road that you can follow up with your finger, it goes past Rettenden, which is printed on the right, and you see it goes up to a place near Hanningfield. Do you see Hanningfield? Yeah. We can see that there is a crossroads there. You see where there is a road that comes across? Yeah. Do you remember that this is where you took the police car to that crossroads? Not by looking at the map, I couldn't, know. Because do you remember that you said something to the policeman? Can you remember what it was that you said? You said to him, quote, I remember the crossroads. That is right, is it not? Could have been, but there's loads of crossroads. Did you carry on as far as the petrol station close to the pub? Called the plough? Does that ring a bell? Was this before we turned around? I mean, I asked them to turn around. This is before you asked them to turn around. That is right. Um, it's not a fixture in my head. No, I appreciate that. But do you remember going past the crossroads and going to a petrol station by a pub called the Plough? No, not necessarily. But in any event, I think what you do remember is that you asked a driver to turn around, did you not? Yes. So to go back along the A130, now going south in the opposite direction, do you remember that? Coming back. Coming back, yes. What was it that you were looking for at that stage, do you remember? Just certain objects to get my bearings. What sort of objects? Could be a road, could have been a slip road, could have been a lane, could have been a number of things. Do you remember saying to the policeman, quote, that farm must be around here? Well, I think the policeman was saying that to himself. The policeman was saying that, but were you looking for a farm in your mind? No, not really. Do you remember what the policeman said to you because you were a bit uncertain? Were you not a bit uncertain about where you were going, is that right? Well, it was a big thing to say, wasn't it? So there were other problems in my head, not just thinking about other things. You were thinking about other things, not just this? Well, enough things. Do you remember the policeman said to you that he was not going to tell you where to go? He wanted you to tell him. Do you remember that? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? You went all the way back, did you not? For the third time to Rettenden Turnpike Roundabout, do you remember? No. Do you remember that? No. You have page three, again our smaller map. You would have come down here, would you not, when you turned around the car. The police car, that is, Mr Jasper. And do you remember that this time you told the policeman to turn left, and that is to Woodham Road. Does that ring a bell? Not the name of the road, no. Not the name of the road, but do you follow with your finger along Woodham Road, there is a nursery, do you see it? Yeah. Nurseries? Yes. Was that something that rang a bell? Yes. It was as if you and the RD in the abbreviation for road, you see that a left-hand turn is Rectory Lane. Do you see that? Yes. Does that ring a bell? No names ring any bells. But you do remember going up Rectory Lane in the police car? I can't really remember. You cannot remember? I well, could have done. I do not know whether you can help us if you were to look at the map. Can you point us out to approximately whereabouts the gate was that you said that you stopped at? 
was Rectory Lane. The name of the lane that we stopped? Well, you cannot remember. No, I can't remember the actual name. Wherever you did stop, take it for a moment, it was Rectory Lane. If that is the road that you went up, can you help us as approximately how far? Well, you're the one who's saying it's that, ro that road I went up. I don't know the actual name of the road. Would you be good enough to take it from me, for the time being, that this is the road that you went up in the police car? Is that okay? Well, that looks more like a road than a lane to me. It looks more like a road than a lane to you. Can I ask you this then? What side of the road was the gate on as you drove up in the police car? The left or the right? Both sides. Did you stop on the left or the right? They were both together. So you have a gate on the left hand side of the road and a gate on the right hand side of the road. Going back to the night that you have been telling us about, you were in a car with a man you do not want to name when you stopped that night by the gate. Did you stop by the gate on the left or the gate on the right? Um, I think more so to the left. More so to the left. We well, are talking about a lane that's eight foot by ten foot wide. Did you have to leave the road to get to the lane? Can you remember if you did? Yeah, come off the road. The man who got out of the car, you say he climbed over the gate? Yes. Which gate did he climb over? The left gate. And what did you do in the car, do you say? Well, turned around and waited. And about how long did you wait for? Half an hour, something like that, three quarters of an hour, no more really. So does this mean the time now is getting on for one in the morning? Around that time, yeah. Was there anything close to the lane? Any houses? At the bottom, yeah. There were houses? Yes, but on the night I didn't drive down that far. On the night you did not drive down that far. How close to the gate did you drive? Um, normal, I suppose you could say. How close to the gate was it that you drove to? A few feet. Could you see what was on the other side of the gate? A field. Could you see what was in the other side of the field? No. Are you a person whom has taken drugs in the past yourself? Yes. What sort of drugs have you taken? I think that's irrelevant. You do not want to tell us? I don't see what this has to do with it. If you do not want to tell us, you do not have to tell us. Do you remember that this night you are telling us about whether you took any drugs? I had a snort of coke. Was this before you arrived at the gate? That's right. What about the man in the car? Did he have a snort of coke? Maybe. Whose coke was it? The passengers. So he took the coke out? Yeah, he got it out. Are you saying you cannot remember whether he snorted any of his own coke? I'm not prepared to say. Were you prepared to say when you were talking to the police in January 1996? Yes. Did you tell the police in January 1996 whether the other man snorted coke? Yeah, he did. That is what you told them? Yes. Is that what happened? Yes. Did he snort once or more than once? More than once. Did he snort before he got out of the car? Yes, he did. What sort of effect can you tell us does coke have if you snort it? It keeps you awake. Were you tired? No, not really. And what was this man wearing? A tracksuit. Is that tops and bottoms? Yes. What was he wearing on his upper half of his body? A tracksuit. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Gloves. So he has gone, you think, for around 30 to 45 minutes, yes? Roughly, yes. Roughly? Well, you don't think at a time when you're just sitting there, you just wait. I take it you were not wearing a watch. I don't wear a watch. When the man came back, where did you drive to then? Towards Woodford. Woodford? Towards London? More or less, not actually to London. When you were arrested by the police in January 1996, Mr Jasper, you were arrested for something else entirely, were you not? That is correct. I think you are now in prison, are you? That is correct. Were you prosecuted for the offences for which you were arrested? Yes. Were you worried when you were arrested about what might happen to you? No, not really. 
As far as you knew, in January 1996, the man that you were with that night, the night that you have been telling us about, he was under arrest or anything as far as you knew? No. He was still out as far as you knew. As far as I knew, yeah. He was not in trouble as far as you knew? That's right. Until you told what you told to the police in January, had you told anybody else about what had happened that night? No. Do you know whether the other man had told anybody else about what had happened that night? I don't know. You do not know that he had? No. So when you were arrested, although it was obviously something that no doubt you would not have wished to have happened to you, you were quite happy that you were not being arrested for what had happened that night, were you? Not necessarily. Because this is right, is it not, Mr Jasper? You were not asked about this night. You volunteered it, did you not? You were the first to mention it, is that right? Yes. Was that to get an easy time from the law? Well, no, that never happened. I went to prison and I'm still there, so I haven't gained anything out of it. No, you have not. But were you hoping that you might gain something out of it? Yeah, of course. That is why you said what you said to the police, is it? That is correct, for an easy time. For an easy time? But I still got prosecuted, I went to prison. Went to prison? Well, there's no favours, I'm still here today. No, because in fact, after you went out with the police and after you were interviewed, they never got back to you about this, did they? The police. They never asked to see you again, to speak to you about this, did they? About what? About what you told them happened this night. Well, that's their problem. It may be their problem. But my question is the police never got in touch with you again to ask you more questions about this, did they? A couple of days worth. You were not at the police station for a couple of days, were you? Yeah. But after that, they did not come back to you, did they? No, not necessarily. You were not arrested for anything that had happened that night, were you? Or prosecuted? No. That night, the night you were telling the police about, did you ever hear anything when you were waiting for 30 minutes or 40 minutes with the car? Say that again. That night, the night you were telling the police about, did you ever hear of anything when you were waiting in the car for the 30 or 45 minutes? No. Not a thing? Not anything that sticks in my mind. Do you know what a gun firing sounds like? Yeah, I think everyone does. You were awake while you were in the car waiting? Yes. You said you did not hear any of the gunshots, did you? That's right. Do you remember many months ago, in fact earlier this year, when you were in prison serving your sentence? Were you told that there was a case going to court about the shooting of three men? I can remember reading about it that three men had been arrested. That was after it had happened, was it, while you were in prison? earlier this year, because you would appreciate, will you not, Mr Jasper, that a written record has been kept of the things that you were saying to the police when you were at the Forest Gate police station. You knew that, did you not? Possibly, yes. And in fact, you had made a handwritten statement, I think, had you not, yourself, in your own handwriting? Yeah, probably. Do you remember somebody in the prison telling you that those documents were going to be disclosed by the prosecution in this case to the lawyers acting on the behalf of the defendants in this case? Do you remember being told that? Say that again. Do you remember somebody in the prison telling you that those documents were going to be disclosed by the prosecution, in this case to the lawyers acting on behalf of the defendants in this case? Do you remember being told that? Yes. When you had been at the police station in January 1996, were you going to be given to the lawyers representing the defendants in this case? Do you remember being told that? Yes. You do? Yeah. Can you remember when that was, Mr Jasper? No. Earlier this year? Possibly, um, a few months back. When did you first know you were coming to court to give evidence at this trial? Today is Friday. When the prison service was poking me in the back saying, get up, you've got to go to court. Was that earlier this week? Yeah. Before this week, did you know that you would be giving evidence at this trial? No. Had anybody contacted you? Um, I think the solicitors did. Which solicitors? Do you remember? Defence. And when was this? That was through the pro probation service. Do you remember when? Um, what, that I was coming to court? 
Do you remember when you got this information that solicitors were trying to contact you through the probation service? How long before this week did that happen? Um, a couple of days. Are you still a frightened man, Mr Jasper? I think everyone is frightened of something. Are you? Not of most things. Would you describe yourself at present as a frightened man? To a certain degree. Has anybody spoken to you in prison about this case? No. Are you sure about that? What, other inmates or staff? Inmates? No, not at all. What about while you have been at court? Has anyone talked to me about it? Yes, downstairs. No. Nobody? Just a person that the judge sent down. That was the lawyer. You have not been threatened at all? No, not at all. Is that right? Is that right what you say? Yes. Now, Mr Jasper, going to the night that you went with the man into this lane, I'm not going to take you through all the details again, but you were asked by my friend about what the man was wearing when he got out of the car. You remember you told us that he was wearing a tracksuit top and bottoms and gloves. Yes. They are those hospital type gloves that you described. Is that correct? That's right. What you will not ask is what he was wearing on his feet. Trainers. Now, moving on from that night, tell the jury this. Before you returned in January 1996, was the visit you had made to the precise location in Rettendon the only visit? Yeah. The only visit you have told the jury you went on was clearly in darkness? That's correct. Finding your way, of course, by the use of the car's headlights and what other light there was, is that correct? And a bit of direction. Direction from whom? From the passenger. You asked many questions about the first time you took the police there on the 15th of January. I would like you to tell the jury this. What time of day or night was that? Dark or daylight? Daylight. You twice, I think, used an expression including the words getting your bearings. Probably. With the police officers in their vehicle, is that what you were trying to do? Yeah. Did it make it any easier the fact that you are now in an area in daylight as opposed to somewhere that you have been in the dark? Yes. It is a bit easier, but you were concentrating on what you have answered on this particular area around Rettendon, is that right? Well, yeah, because of the dark. It's like, you just look for certain things, certain things stick in your mind. They look different during the day. And the place at which you ended up with the police officers, was that the spot at which you had ended up with that man on the night you have been telling us about? by down the lane by the two gates. Say that again, down the lane by the two gates. Again, of course, I cannot ask you anything that was said between you and this man. I do not want to go anywhere near it. When you were talking to the police in January about this matter, I think you have told us that you did name some names of the people involved. Is that right? That's right. And why did you do that? Just tell the jury why you named names as opposed to making them up. Well, because it's not made up because it's not made up. No further questions, Mr. Jasper.